Welcome to the workbench and welcome to another episode of Wheels Wings TV. Today we have the new 170 second scale Mark 16 Mosquito from Airfix. Let's have a look. First up, we have our wings, some nice variation in panel lines, flaps and aileron hinge lines, wider and deeper than all the other corresponding panel lines, give the in implication that there is an actual gap there, which is always nice. Very subtle raised section along the wing here. I believe that was a slightly thicker piece of lapped wood over the spars, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, a couple of access points in the engine cowling. It's a little bit of rivet detail as well. Lower ring, more of the same. Nice differences in panel line weight. Heavier on control surfaces, lighter on just differences between panels, some nice rivet detail, opening for our landing light, of course, separate wing tips. And we have that raised structural bit on the bottom as well. Get our horizontal tail with elevator molded to one top, one half. And then the other half of the tailplane molded separately, so we get a reasonably sharp trailing edge, which is always nice. And the rudder with some very nice scalloping for the fabric. And then nothing really to report on the inside, although we do see we got some alignment bits for the wing spurs. Not too bad so far. Next up we have our fuselage halves and our engine nacelles. Now you'll notice that the fuselage is complete from nose to tail, no separate forward fuselage. So Airfixes paint themselves into a little bit of a corner because they're not going to be able to capitalize on the variants of the Mosquito and release the fighter bomber and the radar equipped night fighter variants as well. So maybe they're planning on just having a completely separate sprue insert. Hard to say. Looks like we're going to be limited to the bombers and the recon aircraft as it sits now. The roof of the bomb bay with our wing spars so that everything will go together nicely there we do have very noticeable ejector pins not really anywhere we're gonna see them but you can see there's a bunch of sludge dirt or whatever that's transferred from the ejector pins and the mold onto the plastic uh, so I'm just wondering if there's not a thin film of grease or oil all over the plastic that we just can't see, so you might want to hose these down just to be on the safe side. Normally you don't really have to worry about so-called mold release. Typically the plastic is chemically engineered to release from the mold and not stick, but seeing this kind of stuff kind of makes me a little bit worried. So um, I would recommend probably degreasing this plastic a little bit. Of course, our engine nacelles got some nice detail for the wheel wells. It's nice external detail, panel lines, some ZUS fasteners and rivets up around the cowling. 
And of course, the, the big deal with this, in case you're thinking, oh, it's just another Mosquito, these are the two-stage supercharged Merlin engines, which necessitated a longer cowling with an extra intake and six exhaust stacks. So a little bit bigger, a little bit meaner looking variant of the Mosquito, but saw lots of use. So up to this point, you would have had to get resin engine nacelles and stick them onto whatever your favorite Mosquito was. So now we have it in plastic. Thank you very much, Airfix. Long overdue. Now, initially, I thought we had a duplicate sprue, when in fact we have two mirrored sprues, E and F. Not uh, unless it's due to the radiator faces. I don't see why anything on here couldn't just be duplicated and why they had to mirror the sprue. Curious. That the only thing on here that would need to be handed as far as I could see would be the the radiator faces in which case you could have just put those on a different sprue and saved yourself a little bit of engineering so whatever the reason we've got our struts for our wheels our undercarriage some little ejector stubs all over them so make sure to clean those up we got our main wheels molded in left and right halves with some relatively chunky tire tread on there but seeing as how we're going to have a center line seam to take care of that's kind of an advantage because we're going to have to do some sanding and scraping so we'll hopefully won't lose all of that tread detail um, if you're so inclined, there are various resin wheels for the Mosquito and 72nd scale you can get as well. But these ones are nicely flattened and bulged as well. So, of course, separate hubs, which is going to make painting nice and simple. Paint the tire, paint the hub, stick them together. No masking involved. Prop spinner, backing plate. We've got our... Other, uh, other characteristic of the Mark 16s and the two-stage Merlins... We got our six stack exhaust. The earlier Mosquitoes, although still a 12 cylinder engine, um, had five exhaust stubs per side. The last two were joined together so that they weren't too close to the wing. Um, potential fire hazard having hot metal near wood. But with the longer cowling on the later Mosquitoes, they could have six exhaust stacks per side. Uh, we've got one of our in lower intakes on the nacelle, that's molded left and right. Unfortunately, the front is molded solid, so you might want to cut that out and open that up a little bit, because that should be obviously a hollow intake. Got our propeller, paddle bladed. Uh, you didn't see the uh, skinny needle bladed propellers on the later Mosquitoes. Coincidentally, that was the exact same paddle bladed prop as used on the Lancaster. We've got our little chin scoop there, the other kind of characteristic to these mosquitoes. Now that's fortunately molded open, so hopefully that's a nice, nice fit to the nacelle. A few other little bits and bobs. We've got our face for our radiator. A little bit of a, a little bit of a grill molded in there some landing gear components we got our wheel well doors in our open or our closed configuration as well as a perfectly sized sacrificial mask so if we're doing the open wheel well we can just block it off and not have to stuff it full of tissue of the oil tanks which were attached to the upper part of the landing gear struts and our hundred and something gallon 
wing slipper tanks for extended range. I don't think those are ejector pins. I think those are actual molded structures. So open landing gear doors nice and clean. That's good to see. A couple of little ones right in the prop there. Attachment points are maybe a bit heavy, so just careful getting the prop blades so you don't gouge them out. But that looks pretty good. All right. Next, we have a bunch of our cockpit bits and had our pilot almost go missing in action. Had to dig around in the bag for him. So he's... <laughs> little, little soft, little vague. I mean, you can tell it's a person, but... I mean, I don't put pilots in my planes, so he's just gonna go in the bin. But curiously... They only give you one. The Mosquito was a two-person airplane, so they give you a pilot, but they don't give you a navigator. So, small oversight there, but if you don't put pilots in your airplanes, it doesn't make a difference anyway. So, uh, we've got our cockpit floor, and we don't have an opening for the access hatch so there's going to be no real option to open a, that door unfortunately but no big deal i mean if you're really invested in opening the cockpit and a little bit of surgery with some drill bits and saws and you can crack that open no real issue instrument panel with a little bit of raised detail nothing special put a decal on there that'll look good if you if that's not good enough i'm sure there'll be some edward photo etch or uh, 3d printed cockpit details bulkhead some electronic boxes tail wheel in extended and retracted options control yoke some more electronic boxes another little widgets and actually take the time to mold the, uh, the the rear face of the instrument panel. Not that that's something you're really going to see, but a nice little touch. Okay. Now we come to our last gray sprue, and herein lies the only real issue with this kit. We've got four 500-pound bombs with their ring fins. A little bit thick, but not horrible could replace that with some metal tubing or some thin sheet plastic or brass or spring for some aftermarket uh, mounting hard points and bracketry and whatnot the struts for opening actuating the bomb bay doors front and rear bulkheads we have the fuel tanks for the roof of the bomb bay and we have our cockpit access door molded with the front bulge for the bomb bay. So mirroring that solid floor, we're not going to be able to pose the cockpit open, so to speak. But those things being fine, here is what we come to. The Mark 16 Mosquito was the first variant to have the bulged Bombay doors to allow them to carry the 4,000 pound Blockbuster, which you will notice is conspicuously absent. Fortunately, the aftermarket has taken care of that. CMK have a nice set of four 4,000 pound cookies that you can pick up. We do have a couple of these in stock. Or if you have the Airfix 72nd scale Lancaster, it does come with a cookie, so you can steal that if you don't plan on using it. Or it is literally a cylinder with a couple of nubbins and a couple of profiles on it. Would not be horrendously difficult to scratch build either. Not a deal breaker, but like the single piece fuselage, doesn't allow different variants. 
a little bit of an oversight on Airfix's part. That we can work around. These Bombay doors, unfortunately, are not appropriate for a wartime Mark 16. All these little nubbins and profiles and whatnot molded in place are for the post-war Mark 35 target tug. The real aircraft that Airfix based this kit off of, I believe, is the one at the RAF Cosford Museum. And although painted to resemble a World War II bomber, it, as it sits, it is in the target tug configuration with all the mounting points and re relevant hardware. So whoever was doing the preliminary work on this kit didn't do the due diligence and make sure that what they had in front of them was actually what they were trying to do. That being said, it is not difficult to fix. Simply take your favorite abrasive implement, sand down these Bombay doors completely smooth, do a little bit of filling and sanding on the inside if you're doing the open doors. And if you're using the closed option, scribe a line right down the middle. Bob's your proverbial uncle, you've got more accurate Bombay doors. Additionally, you could go and get the Freight Dog resin set. They have a one-piece bulged Bombay door that you can pick up as well. Or, if you, that doesn't bother you a hoot, glue them on, paint them up, and admire your finished mosquito. And lastly, we have our clear parts. So we do have two main canopies, one in the more or less standard bomber configuration. The other has the big dome on top, which pretty much guarantees we're going to have the photo recon variants at some point. Along with the corresponding side windows, we have the sort of overall bulged one for the standard canopy and the blister bulges which go with the photo recon variant. We've got the little windows for the corners of the nose, some landing lights, uh, I believe it looks like it's for the leading edge of the wing. We have our nose transparency. Now, They've kind of done what a lot of kit manufacturers do, and they put a bit of raised framing around the base of that clear part. That's not necessarily correct. Um, if you look at the nose of a mosquito, it is one smooth contour from the flat panel along these windows and all the way back. There's no real interruptions or steps with framing or anything like that, so we might need to carefully do some filling and sanding and polishing potentially. With these little windows, you always wanna to try to glue them a little bit proud so you can smooth everything down, polish them up. And we've got our one-piece clear wingtips marked port and starboard. So we don't have to worry about blending in the actual wingtip light itself. However, uh, don't quote me, but I believe the Mosquito had a clear cover with a colored bulb. Normally you would just drill into the back of the piece, put a little bit of paint in there, and you have a little nubbin that looks like a uh, light bulb. So you might have to cheat and just use some transparent paint red and green respectively to do those but e for effort anyway clarity wise main canopies are pretty good not a lot of distortion at least not looking straight down Yeah, fair amount of lensing through the side windows, of course, because they are very curved. Flat panel on the nose is nice and clear. A little bit of distortion through the sides. 
and if your eyesight isn't what it used to be, just use those clear molded wingtips and you probably get about a 1.5 power magnification there so you can read the instruction manual. But clean, clear framing is not super sharp, but it is rather prominent. Um, it does look a little bit heavy, but uh, these canopies were beefed up for pressurization, so the framing should be a little more chunky than on earlier versions. Pretty good. And of course, that leaves us with our constructions. A little historical blurb on the Mosquito. And hey, look. Modifications to allow 4,000 pound cookie. A little bit of historical information and specifications, best results, surfaces should be clean. So definitely, I usually ignore that on this one with some of that schmoo on the inside. Give it a little bit of a hose down. Assembly, blah, blah, blah. And on to the important bits. So we got our Bombay roof slash cockpit floor slash wing spars with some bulkheads going in place. Now you might want to just plop this into the fuselage half to make sure these bulkheads line up where they're supposed to be as well with that cockpit floor just while the, the glue sets up. So, uh, rear bulkhead for the cockpit, some structure some electronic boxes, navigators, seat and backrest, another electronic box, and I believe that one is the receiver for the G or the Oboe, um, radio navigation aids. Um, not every aircraft had that, so you might want to look that up if you're doing a particular airplane. Pilot's seat and backrest with the big armor plate back there sides and the armrests that goes into place instrument panel with the i guess a little bulkhead with the rudder pedals decal for the instrument panel that goes in control column vague interpretation of a bomb site Fuel tanks go up into the bomb bay. You may want to leave those separate for painting. Uh, bomb bay would have been that interior gray green. The fuel tanks were kind of a red brown bake light color. A little bulkhead for the tailwheel goes in. And then we can close up our fuselage. And that is exactly how they built real mosquitoes. They built up each fuselage half on a big mold, ran all the electrical, ran all the control runs, and stuck it all together. We have our cockpit door with its clear window. So at the very least, you might want to drill a hole in the cockpit floor so that as it sits on the table you will get some light coming through as you would on the real thing. That goes into place and as we mentioned with the bomb bay doors not necessarily being correct for the Mark 16, this rear fairing here is also not quite right. Um, this is sort of a little flap for the deploying of that uh, target drogue for the target tug operations. This should in fact be a fairing that goes from one side of the bomb bay to the other. So glue this in place and then bulk that sides up with some milliput or to me epoxy putty or green stuff, whatever you like. Sand it smooth and that fixes that rear fairing as well little nubbin on top and on the bottom. I believe on the photo recon variants that was also a camera port in addition to ones that would have been in the bomb bay. 
Now we got our rudder going into place. Um, they don't indicate it, but you could probably pose that left or right a little bit. Horizontal tail go into place, and they get a nice big deep slot, and they interlock, so that's going to be nice and strong and hopefully self-aligning. And we cut our landing gear, so you so literally use the wing as an assembly jig to make sure everything sits nice and square and true. So the last thing you want is your landing gear being all cattywampus and all over the place. So that's a nice little touch. Two halves of our tire together. I'm gonna make sure we get some of that seam taken care of. Got our hubs. Of course, we can paint that separately. Wheel goes on to the landing gear wing with the landing light and if you want those slipper tanks you got a couple of holes to open up top and bottom of the wing we got that clear wing tip going in place so make sure you mask off that navigation light and we have our exhaust so those two sections of three come together to make six and they got a handy dandy little box that they glue into onto the inside of the nacelle. I generally prefer if you can install exhausts after so that make painting and weathering them up a little bit easier but you can always just mask around that and spray them in an appropriately burnt metal color. Same thing on the opposite side and front rear bulkheads for the wheel well, our little nubbin for attaching the propeller, nacelle goes together, we got our little chin going in place here, hopefully that's a nice fit here, we don't have to worry about destroying a bunch of these fastener details. And we've got our lower intake here, I believe that's well, that's the carburetor intake, and the one underneath the prop is for the supercharger, if I'm not mistaken. Could be the other way around. But once again, that's molded solid, so you'd want to carve that open, make it actually look like an intake. And a lot of aircraft had a little mesh screen stuck in front of it to um, keep it from getting clogged up with ice. So probably have to source some sort of photo etch for that. And if you're doing wheels up, cut these little nubs off, glue your door in place. That should hopefully be a nice fit. And a nacelle goes into place on the wing. If you are not doing wheels up, they give you this handy dandy little molded, basically they just copy the closed Bombay doors, but with a few notches for the attachment points. So you can stick that, so you can paint your wheel well up stick that in place and not have to shove it full of tissue for when you paint the rest of the airplane. Or you paint the rest of the airplane, mask around that opening, and then paint at the end. So six and one half dozen against the other. Uh, radiator faces slot in with some handy arrows indicating orientation. wing goes on to the fuselage and then they want you to install the landing gear of course leave that off until the end of the build doors leave them off prop leave that off and that's one whole side of the airplane and landing gear etc nacelles wash rinse repeat for the opposite side once again, leave your landing gear, leave your props, leave the doors, leave that separate until your final assembly. And here's our bomb bay. So our closed option, once again, let me reiterate, these shapes on here are only for the target tug, not for the bomber, so sand that smooth, scribe a line down the center, 
and you've got a what it should be. Now some of them would have openings for cameras for the photo recon versions. You might need to put those in if you want, but at the very least, sand that perfectly smooth, scribe a line, and you're 90% of the way there. Also, as I mentioned, that rear fairing. So glue the co cockpit, glue the bomb bay doors in place, and then that gives you the full contour there to match up with some epoxy putty. And then that will look like it should. If you're doing bomb bay open, you could install your actuators, attachment points for all the bombs, which are keyed so you get them in the right place. Hard points go in, and then of course those are for the 500 pounders. Now, additionally, because these doors are for the target tug, you do need to scrape down this bit here and do not install this piece because that will inter would interfere with the bombs if it was too close. So leave that off, sand that smooth, and those are fixed. Now, of course, if you were going to use one of the cookies, you would not have these hard points in place, these attached, if I'm not mistaken, with just a simple strap that went from one side to the other with a simple little release catch. So they'd hit the button, that would let go, and the bomb would drop. Don't quote me, but research that if you need to. Then we got our slipper tanks going together. Those get installed. I would be tempted to leave them off until later. Sometimes you would see these painted differently to the rest of the airplane because they could mix and match. So you might see gray ones on a black plane or silver ones on a gray plane or blue ones or one blue and one gray or one silver, one black. Um, up to you. We've got our lone pilot by himself with no navigator so he has no idea where he's going no wonder he looks so sad got our standard canopy with the side windows that goes into place hopefully that's a nice snug fit we've got our little corner windows go in now, like i mentioned depending on how those fit you might want to glue them a little bit proud of the surface a little bit of super glue very carefully, sand them perfectly flush, and then polish them back to clarity. As with the nose transparency, that should be a constant smooth contour all along here, so you might need to do a little bit of filling, a little bit of sanding, a little bit of polishing. Tail wheel in extended or retracted position pitot tube on the forward edge of the vertical tail and we have a finished mosquito paint options we've got 571 squadron from the pathfinders these were always the best mosquito crews in the royal air force the best navigators and the best pilots because they needed to make sure they knew exactly where they were going because the hundreds of Lancasters and Halifaxes following them were expecting these guys to mark the target so they could hit it. Standard sort of paint scheme, medium sea gray on the bottom, ocean gray and dark green on top. There's some pretty blue spinners. Uh, note, when ML963 was photographed in September of 44, the aircraft had just returned from repairs at Hatfield, which was the de Havilland factory. Uh, this is evident from replacement panel in gray on the port upper wing. And the no step markings above the ra radiators repainted in what appears to be ocean gray. The spinners appear to be a mid blue, not unlike PRU blue. So you've got a little bit of artistic license there. This panel here being a different color, the panels over the radiators being a different color and not having the big red X's on them, and the spinners being some sort of blue. Then no matter what you do, somebody will tell you it's probably wrong. 
and 109 squadron also in 44 black with the ocean gray and dark green upper surfaces and these ones we do have that big red no step x marking um, slightly unusual seeing a black Bomber Mosquito, typically you only saw the early Night Fighters painted overall black. You didn't see it on the Bombers too often, so that's kind of a, a nice change of pace. And of course, if neither of these appeal to you, Extra Decal does have a sheet with a couple of other alternatives on it that you can pick up. Likewise, lots of these served post-war and in civilian use, so you can paint some of them up as well. And seeing as how the parts are for a target tug, they were incredibly colorful. Black and yellow stripes, high visibility orange markings, etc, etc. So piece together some decals for one of those and you'd have a very colorful mosquito. But the decals we do have, typical Airfix shopped out to cartograph, not, ve not very thick at all, nice semi-gloss sort of finish. Clear is very, very, very tight. The D, there's no clear in the middle of the D. Only part of the S has clear in it and the H, which is where they connect. The keep off big red X, that does have clear throughout. But everything else is right to the edge, no overhang. So very minimal chance of silvering on these. Even some nice little shiny silver decals here. Stencils are all legible, believe it or not. Those should be drama free. So the new 172nd scale Airfix Mosquito. On the upside, we finally have a two stage supercharged Merlin engined Mosquito in plastic with no resin conversion work to have to be done. On the negative side, this is not exactly a Mark 16 as they say it is. Parts of this are more appropriate for the Mark 35 target tug. A lot of people are gonna to wanna to sharpen their pitchforks and light the torches and go down an angry mob airfix for making such a obvious goof but I think they can capitalize on this because typically the more obscure, for lack of a better word, options need to be converted from the standard version. Airfix have given us the lesser known version out of the box. So in addition to a photo recon boxing, which we're probably gonna see, Airfix can capitalize on the fact that the parts in here are for a target tug and include some decals in a future boxing for a target tug because like I said they were incredibly bright and colorful and I think that would sell very well because if there's one thing modelers like more than iconic aircraft it is iconic aircraft that look different from all the other iconic aircraft, especially when it comes to British planes, all in the same greens and grays. Having something with yellow, silver, and orange is a nice change of pace. So I can't promise there'll be a complete build review of this kit, but if you would like to see how I go about correcting some of the issues with this kit, leave me a comment down below to the effect and I'll see what I can pencil into my busy schedule. This kit is available on the Wheels Wings eStore so you can head over there and pick one up, link down below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and we'll catch you next time.